Hello guys. So today I'm going to go through this photo maker uh, with other face swap or face changes uh, tools comparison together and have various tests on all these tools. And as you guys might saw other YouTube videos uh, talk about the photo makers, go through all this, get a page about this white paper as well. So I'm not going to very details uh, talk about the white papers about these photo makers because you can see in other YouTube videos, in other channels, or maybe something else somewhere else. But then, as you can see this in general user point of view, it can change one realistic image or a real person image photos to different styles using the similar face. I cannot say this is like exactly the same face because as you see, there's other element on there. So scrolling down here, it talks about the method how they use for changing the face from the source image to a new AI image. And this is using the Diffusions model. So it's going to be compatible with ComfyUI Stable Diffusion setup. And we will going through with this PhotoMaker setup and build a simple workflow from text to image. And also we will compare with one commercial tool that I recommend perfectly for lower computing power hardware system. And you can use FaceSwap with such tool for video animation. Also, we are going to compare photo makers with the most popular reactor face swap. So let's start it in the photo makers hugging face website. You have the files of the models and the size is about 900 megabytes. And you can download this beforehand, save it in your folder first. And then we are going to install the custom node. This is official GitHub page of photo maker project. Now they have changed the names recently called Comfy UI Photo Maker Plus after I recording the first time. And then this is the newer name of this. And scroll down here, you see the installations and we are going through this together. So we go to the custom node folder following their instruction. And step two, we are going to have the command prompts in custom nodes folder. We paste this command and install their photo maker plus folder and all the files in there hundred percent. And then we can close this command prompt and we see this custom notes folder appear in our system. Then next step, we are going to move the hugging face AI models of the photo makers. And if you have not downloaded yet, please go download. And then we are going to put the photo makers AI model in the models folder and underneath the models folder, we have to create a subfolder called photo maker. So let's create a new folder and we got to rename it as photo maker. And inside this subfolder, we put files in there and I have downloaded this photo maker version one bin file. And this is the only file that we need. And I have downloaded this already in here. So I drag and drop to this folder. So close everything. And then we go back to comfy UI. Now get start with the comfy UI and looks like we don't need to do additional things in here. After installation Tate, we got to click uh, the run NVIDIA comfy UI bat file and kickstart the system. So go to the comfy UI. I will have empty workflow page and I load this default workflow for text to image, change the image to preview image because I don't need to save all the testing image here and now in here, as you can see, I have another workflow already done previously and I tested before, and this is for the photo maker text to image. So I'm going to go through some important node in this workflow that we are going to create together. So in the default text to image workflow, we don't need some of that. But then when you click the right click mouse menu, you see this photo makers, you will have the photo maker styles and the photo makers and code plus notes here. So this too is the important notes, custom notes for the photo maker workflow. So in here, remember we have to use the trigger words for the text prompt. So in our case, we have the IMG as the trigger word for the text prompt, just like you do that in some LoRa styles, if you are applying the LoRa's in your text prompt. So let's choose the checkpoint models. And in here, I'm using the real VIS version, two models. Currently, the photo makers only support SDXL. 
So remember that you have to choose SDXL model or the SDXL base model and just configure the right size in that empty latent image. And then we are going to move all of this custom nodes from my existing workflow to the new workflow. So the first notes that is very important to loading uh, the photo makers model. So we have uh, the photo makers custom notes here. You can type this text and then it will appear this one. And then the photo makers bin file that this is where uh, we download uh, previously. And there's only one model's name. And that's what it will appear by default. So the photo makers are going to be connect with the encode plus custom load here. So you see the photo makers, uh, they have the green line. You connect the green line basically very easy. And then there's a clip layer, the yellow line. You have to just like my example here, we connect the clip line to the encode yellow line. And I'm going to fast forward these steps, all the notes connections because it's kind of messy in here. And I will share this workflow files with you guys. Uh, you guys can go download it in open art or any links that I post underneath this video description below. So we have the applied note and the negative text clip. So the negative clip text encode. This node is for connecting our negative condition in the, the sampler and the photo makers encode plus condition are going to be our positive to the K sampler condition. We create like two text prompt and connecting on the negative on positive because we need the style, the photo uh, maker style to generate the image for us. So let's click one time. I have my example image here and it will come up for image from my example. So a girl in the swimming pool and the face, it's kind of uh, not really exactly the same face when I test this photo maker, but you see the eyes and the nose is similar. It is not like chopping the face from the source image and then paste that into the new generate image, but the eyebrows, the nose, the style of the original source image, it does come up some elements from that and making a new image. That's what I test so far with this uh, photo makers. And then you can use uh, other styles or maybe, uh, yeah, you can also use image path to load an image in here. And even I use other image from my previous AI generate AI image and the result are not really the same as the source image. So after I identified the age and it still doesn't look the same as the source image, let's try with comparison with commercial tools that call a cool.com. I have used that uh, before as really stable, really cool tools, and it can do multiple face swap, multiple image or videos face swap. So I'm going to test one tools from here. And also I will test one with reactor face swap and side by side comparison with photo makers. So a uh, cool, they have multiple face detection. You can upload your own character face or use their demo. But then I like to try with my own character face. So let's upload another one here. So we have two character face, right? And the system identified two a uh, face in the original source photos. And also they have age settings in here. So maybe I set it like 20 years old, something will looks younger. And then the face enhancement. Now this face enhancement is really good. Their system is just turn the face very naturally that is matching with the source image, like the side of the face everything is going to be very matched. It's not like you chop the image on the photo. And here's one examples from my previous short videos, animations, and I'm going to do this one for the videos face swap. Now, as you can see the timeline, they have detect each faces on the right hand side column, and then you can choose your change face image. And let's use their demo image and see this time I'm going to set it uh, like an older age and let's see what their result is. Now this tool is very handy. Before Reactor Face Swap, I have used them. They have a free plan and they have also pro and max plan and even it's a pay system. And I still think this is worth to use it because their system is so stable. They have face swap and uh, talking photos and as I know a lot of people have asked me before how to make talking photos and there you have it I have make one in here before and let's try one more on here 
uh, with you guys together. And just basically you upload your own image and then it will identify the face, the mouth, where the mouth is and type your text. Click high quality generate and it will wait for the result on the top menu. So here's the video face swap result as you can see like an older age and it does turn into an older age for the result. And then the face of this is really match and yeah, just the pro versions of this face swap tool is always do the best. And then they also have the open API and then you can integrate with your system. If you are doing uh, other backend system, uh, want to integrate multiple AI tools, uh, then you can use it for face swap image. And also they have available uh, for video face swap API tools for you to integrate with your system. So yeah, for face swap commercial tools, I recommend this one using a more stable, I would say is more stable than this photo maker. I mean, the photo makers basically like they have not much described instruction in their GitHub page how to use it. But uh, yeah, mostly they are saying it's like you have to post your trigger words. So in here we do IMG. So let's try another image. Let's say I put a male photos and do a male photos. See if they have performs better. No, it doesn't do good. Honestly, it doesn't look like Chris. I am not sure if I said anything wrong. And let's say I put a male image and for the second time, it still doesn't even get close to the source image. Yeah. Let's turn it up to 40 sampling steps. Sampling steps maybe can help to get better. And also I'm trying different styles here with you guys, maybe like cinematic or cartoon styles. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's say the comic books and then let's bring back the thunder God, right? Yeah. The thrall. And then let's bring back Chris to his iconic movie character. And let's see. Yeah. Still this one looks like the source image. I'm not sure if I said anything wrong, but yeah, I will share this uh, workflow with you guys. You guys can try this. I'm kind of like curious if their tools in their white paper page is kind of accurate. Yeah, even Thor is kind of, okay, that is getting close, but it still doesn't look like Chris in general. It's just only because of the character's image from comic book style and it turns similar like the original character. But if you see the face, it doesn't really look like their original image face. Um, but let's, let's try a few more times. Okay, so the line art is pretty close. Like the character is pretty close this time. I think maybe the cinematic problems, the styles from cinematic or the photograph styles doesn't do pretty good. I'm not sure. Let's say no style and see how it works. OMG. So when I use no style is worse. The face doesn't really looks like the original character. Um, even I turn up to step 40. I'm not sure. But then, yeah, we can try multiple image with this one. As I saw their white paper, they said the more image you put in, the reference is going to be performing better. So let's go back to these characters. Well, not really. And their loading time is kind of slow compared with Reactor and Akul.com face swap tool. Look at that. It's not even like half of the, the, the performance from Reactors. So I'm not sure if I do anything wrong with this workflow, but it does generate results. So you guys can try it out. But so far I see this is not really perform as what we expected compared with other face swap tools. And if you ask me like, other YouTube videos talk about these photo makers before. Maybe some is overhyped of this new white paper released previously. But then, yeah, I don't see. Uh, this is like similarity with the source image. So maybe you guys can try it out with difference image. And yeah, we can discuss that later. But so far, I don't see this is good one. As you can see, they are testing this like their testing result in the page. Well, yeah, even some styles is not similar to the actor face. And in here, I test with the Disney style and it comes out this kind of image. Well, the eyes and the nose is pretty close, but overall, like the face detection of the styles from the reference face, it doesn't do that much good. I would say it looked very natural as a new image, but doesn't look like the original source image face. And let's try another styles of 
a new image with Chris, or maybe I have done something wrong with the workflow setting, but usually when this is work, then it is going to be working like very simple workflow. But yeah, okay, this one is kind of close, like Disney characters. And then let's switch to cinematic character styles and look at that. Oh boy, this is totally not the same one. Uh, forget it. Let's try reactors. Let's try using reactors with like a side-by-side -side comparison with reactor face swap. I think this is a good experiment with you guys running this and stay out of the overhype of some new white paper or release or stuff like that. And this is their result, the photo maker's result. And then we got the comparison. So based on their source image and then the reactor face swap using that image to came out even close looking styles compared with the photo maker styles image. All right, so I'm not sure if I did something wrong in the workflow, but it is working. And I follow their instruction in their GitHub page. And look at this. This is the comparison of reactors and photo makers. And yeah, you decide what to use for character consistent phase. For me right now at this moment, I prefer using reactor. And a cool dot com if I am out of town carrying my laptop. If I'm in comfy UI, I'm not going to get into the overhype of this photo makers yet because I don't see the performance as what I expect and the loading time and speed is not what I expect. So yeah, I will save this workflows and you guys can take a look and try this with your image. And I hope you guys get some information from this video and don't get overhyped when some new technologies release. So see you guys in the next videos and take care. Bye.